Hey everyone, Professor Dan here, and today's lesson is about why college costs are so high. So shine up your learning shoes because class is in session. No talking! Last week, President Obama decided to take some time off from releasing the guys who did 9-11 to unilaterally change the rules regarding federal student loans. Obama's new plan makes it so that students don't have to pay any more than 10% of their income each time they make a payment on their student loans. This helps some students in the short term, and it helps Obama because you know, election in November. But in the long term, it's pretty obvious that this type of thing just exacerbates the existing problems. But Dan, how could lowering student loan rates hurt students? Well, stupid, it's primarily because more borrowers who take out large loans are now going to pay an even smaller portion of it back before their loan forgiveness kicks in after 20 years. So the effect of all this is going to be for students to take out even bigger student loans since they're now cheaper to pay back and the situation won't improve at all. So just like you do with Obamacare, the president basically decided to just throw more taxpayer money at his favorite constituencies instead of doing anything to solve the actual problem, which is high college costs. Now, obviously, extraordinarily high college costs are the reason why student loans are so popular to begin with and tuition costs keep rising. Why are college costs so high and getting higher every year? Well, ironically, a lot of it is because of the increased availability of student loans. Uh -oh. Stay with me on this one. From 1999 to 2009, average tuition at public four-year colleges rose 73%, even as me median family income fell about 7%. Last year, America's entire student loan debt combined surpassed $1 trillion for the first time. That's more than is owed nationally on credit cards or car loans. And the schools where students have access to federal loans and grants are charging 78% higher tuition on average than the ones where students are not eligible for federal loans and aid. Student loans are super easy to get. Unlike other loans, you don't need any collateral like a house or a car to get one. The government will basically give one to anybody. If you can fill out the student loan form without drooling all over it, you're pretty much qualified. And with the college education now seen as more of a necessity than ever, more students are going to college, and a lot of them need money in student loans to pay for it. Now, the colleges aren't dumb. They realize that there's basically an unlimited government tap of money flowing to these kids. And since the demand for college is so high, and the money supply is basically infinite, colleges see this as an opportunity to raise tuition and buy more stuff. Universities can raise tuition because they know whatever sticker price they put on a college degree, there will be students ready to take out low interest loans to pay for it and a federal government perfectly willing to subsidize it. So the colleges raise their tuition making it necessary for the students to take out more in student loans from the government which is now lowering the amount that the students have to pay back which will allow students to borrow more and encourage colleges to raise tuition. You see how this works? It's a vicious cycle. Also this is a vicious cycle. I like this one better. And it's not like the colleges are spending all this money on new textbooks either. The alumni want a new stadium. New tube for the marching band, rock climbing wall in the school gym, cucumber water in the faculty lounge, new parachutes for the skydiving team, intramural Quidditch league. I don't know how that'll work, but sure, why not? The International Brotherhood of Vegans wants to hand out free falafels to everyone on campus. And of course, the miming club wants new berets. On a side note, mimes suck. They're really just clowns pretending to have a disability. And there's nothing funny about disabled clowns. Just like the government, there's absolutely no incentive for institutes of higher education to be cost efficient. But all all the extra non-educational crap that these schools are blowing money on isn't even the most wasteful part. You know how college campuses are bastions of liberalism? Well, this isn't just evident in the ideology of its professors. It's also evident in the way academia is structured. Because universities are essentially mini versions of government bureaucracies which have far exceeded the original intent of college, which was to teach people stuff. Like the federal government, college campuses are notoriously inefficient with high fixed costs. Lots of buildings, big campuses. College College campuses are basically tiny little cities completely controlled by the academic left. And like the government, college campuses are full of bureaucrats. These days there are almost as many administrators at universities as there are faculty members like professors. Now in theory, administrators are responsible for overseeing the faculty members and the other aspects of campus life. These are the people on campus known as deans, vice presidents, provosts. For example, Purdue University has seven provosts, 16 deans, and 11 vice presidents. 11 vice presidents. I'm not even convinced that the federal government needs one vice president. And if Joe Biden is watching this right now, he's probably nodding his head in agreement. 
It's true, I'm not useful. Information technology specialists, human resources, communications. At this point, growth of student services and administration costs are vastly outpacing expenditures in instruction. Does your school of dentistry really need a Department of Diversity Marquette University? Hey, University of Arizona, do you think maybe your school's poetry center could function just as well without the seven administrators you have working there? Universities are filled with armies of these administrators. A lot of them make six-figure salaries and most of them do nothing that involves teaching or coming up with the curriculum. Their job is to manage the bureaucracy, which they obviously suck at because it just keeps getting bigger and more inefficient. So to recap, you have one institution, the federal government, that has no real incentive to save money or improve efficiency, giving out cash to 18 year olds who then give that money to a bunch of other institutions that have no incentive to save money or improve efficiency. And both agencies are run by unaccountable bureaucrats who have no real relation to the basic function that the institutions were intended to serve. <laughs> what? could possibly go wrong. College is important. It raises your earning potential dramatically and for a lot of people it's a life-changing personal experience in which social skills are developed and drinking skills are perfected. But as with so many things, the good intentions of the government and college administrators have managed to bring the system to the brink of economic collapse. And while it might be possible to reverse some of this damage, that would require the government and the universities to make some really tough choices and the American left is never going to do that because as we all know, college students and professors are an integral part of their base. I'm Dan Joseph. Your final exam is subscribing to my channel by clicking the red widget below. Well done. Class dismissed.